Hey there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to reading Montesquieu's Spirit of the Laws. Today we're looking at Book 11, which is the famous Book 11, which in many ways becomes a, a, the, spent, the sent chapter that really, a book that becomes principal for the division of powers in Montesquieu, one of Montesquieu's central arguments of the division of powers as a mechanism of preventing despotism. So we look at 11, the title is on the laws that form political liberty in its relation with the Constitution. So for the, the connection between what political liberty and the, uh, 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 the laws that provide for political liberty uh, in the Constitution. So chapter one, general idea. I distinguish the laws that form political liberty in relation with the Constitution from those that form it in relation to the citizen. The first are subject of the present book, and the second I shall dis, uh, discuss in the second. So therefore, the first was political liberty. It refers to the liberty of the political system. Like this is this is political freedom, political freedom, which means independence, self-governance, and these concepts. Um, whereas uh, the next one is the, the idea of uh, uh, of its relation with the citizen, the liberty of the citizen. This is what we would call uh, civil liberties and c maybe civil rights, but also mostly civil liberties. Um, so let's focus on this question. Now, the various significations, this is chapter two, the various significations given to the word liberty. No word has received more different signif uh, significations and has struck the mind in so many ways as has liberty. So liberty is saying that the, 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 what, what does liberty symbolize? What does it mean? Okay, the meaning of liberty. What does it mean? And this is, and he's saying that me, liberty is one of these words that have multiple possible meanings and significations in a sense. So what he says, some have taken it for the ease of removing of one to whom they had given tyrannical power. Right. So they remove the liberty is the removing of tyrant, tyrants. Right. Some for the faculty of electing the one whom they were to obey. So liberty is so the first one is removing tyrant some a tyrannical power. Second, electing the right, you know, the faculty of electing the ones who they were going to obey. For others, uh, uh, the right to be armed and to be able to use violence. Right, <laughs> the right to be you know armed and to use violence. That's, that's right. Yet others for the privilege of being governed only by a man of their own nation. Or by their own laws. Okay, this is. I look at note one. Um, uh, Cicero's Episte uh, uh, ad adicum six to. I have copied Sevacola's uh, edict, which permits the Greeks to end their uh, differences among themselves according to their laws. This makes them regard themselves as a free people. In other words, this idea that. that, that that they're gov governing by their own laws, right? Either one of their own or government. Now, that's that wonderful sentence with that first category. So we have, so right here, right away, we have had four different specific categories of what liberty means. Now he's now now he's going to say, for certain people, liberty has long been the usage of wearing wrong beards. This is the Rome. This is the Russians, right? This is from. Uh, uh, Muscovites could not bear Peter's to cut them off, right? Um, men have given this name to one form of government and has ex and, and have excluded the others. So we have given, uh, those who have tasted Republican government put it in this government. Those who enjoyed monarchical government placed it in monarchy. Uh, again, this is uh, the Capitans refused, uh, refused the Republican state. The Romans offered them. There was an example of that. As they had a monarchy, they want monarchy. They wanted that. The, um, in short, each has given the name of liberty to the government that was consistent with his customs or his inclinations. And as in a republic, one does not always have the visible or so uh, or so present uh, uh, present uh, uh, present the inst instruments of the ills of which one complains. And as the very laws seem to speak more and the executions of the law speak to speak less, what an ordinary place is liberty in republics and excludes them from monarchy. So therefore this is, 
again, this is a very complicated argument. He says, we give them to the government we like, uh, consistent with the customs and the inclinations. And, and as republics, one does not have always, vis uh, always have visible and so present the instruments of the ills of which one complains to. As the very laws seem to speak more and the executioner of the laws speak less. One ordinary places liberty in republics and excludes it from monarchies. Right? The monarchies, that, the, the, words, the laws are more evident than the executioners are saying. Whereas monarchy is, um, monarchy, the, the, the king or the monarch is very present. Uh, um, uh, 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 and that's a point here. Finally, as in democracies, the people seem to uh, uh, seem very nearly to do what they want. Liberty has been placed in this sort of government, and the power of the people have been confused with liberty of the people. In other words, this final point about democracy is that they believe that people can do what they want, and the hair of liberty has been placed in a sort of government, right? And the power of the people has been confused with the liberty of the people. That's a very important point. Now, what chapter three, what liberty is? It is true that democracies, the people seem to do what they want, but political liberty is in no, in, in no way consists in doing what one wants. In a, in a state, that is, in a society where there are laws, liberty can only consist in having the power to do what one should want to do, and in no way being constrained to do what one should not want to do. So I mean, in other words, this is a very interesting point that in a state where there's society and where there's laws, liberty should consist in having the power to do what one should want to do, not in doing and 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 in be no way constrained to do what one should not want to do. Okay, in other words, the things you should not want to do, you should not be in any way constrained to do, and then therefore you should only want to do what one should want to do. Okay, this is very interesting point here saying it's not just it's not simply what you ever you want to do it's what you should want to do uh, one must put one must put oneself in mind of what independence is and what liberty is liberty is the right to do everything the law permits and if one citizen could do whatever they forbid he would no longer have liberty because the others would likewise have the same power in other words, the second someone is, will do what the law forbids, everyone will have the right to do that. And therefore, that would be the ending of the, uh, 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 the society, and that's the order of the society. Uh, chapter four, continuation of the same subject. Democracy and aristocracy are not free states by their nature. Political liberty is found only in moderate governments, but it is not always in moderate states. In other words, this is that interesting point that that democracy and aristocracy are not necessarily completely free states by their nature. Uh, political liberty is found only in moderate governments, but it is not always found always in moderate states. It is present only when the power is not abused, but it has eternally been observed that any man who has power is led to abuse it. He continues until he finds limits. Who would think of it? Even virtue has need of limits. Now, this is a very important point, the idea of limit. In other words, the danger of this is power is this thing that we always have more and more and more. This idea we have this more. Now, this is the problem of, uh, in economics, we call it that more is always better or fallacy. It's not. It is a point where, uh, you know, where this is the law, this is a, this is a, Law in economics and social science, and also in life, of diminishing marginal returns. At a certain point, you get a optimal point, and that therefore doing more does not always give you that same positive benefit. And that's actually giving negative externalities. You, you you start getting less, not more. You don't get the same level of more. Sometimes you start getting less than what you thought. More you do, the less result. To the point where you actually having, uh, 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 to the point where at a certain point. It's actually producing negative results, not positive results. So that's so. Therefore, even virtue has a need of limit in this sense. This idea for Montesquieu that there needs to be a limit in, in this stuff. 
the situation. That's what liberty itself is a limit. Limit in, in, in that front, it's not doing what you want, and rather it's 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 doing what you should want to do, right? This is and and not to abuse power. Uh, so that one cannot abuse power, power must check power by the arrangement of things. So to again to avoid the abuse of power, power needs a check power. This is what you know the famous line from uh, uh, Federalist Ten, right? A constitution can be such that no one will be constrained to do the things the law does not oblige him to do, or be kept from doing the things that the law permits him to do. So this is the continuation. This is how you can create the things. The constitution can be done to ensure that people, are, you know, the, the, the const that no one will be constrained to do the things the law does not oblige him to do, or to be kept from doing the things that the law permits him to do. Chapter five, on the purpose of the various states. All, although all states have the same purpose in general, which is survival of the state, you know, the good of the all right, which is to maintain themselves, right? This is this is the, this is all states seek to maintain themselves. Yet the state, yet each state has a purpose particular to it. So every state will have a general purpose that is preservation, but then every other state will have a unique purpose to it, a a purpose particular to it. Expansion was the purpose of Rome. War, that of the Las Madonians, the Spartans. Religion, that of the Jewish, uh, uh, of the Jewish law. Commerce, that of Marseilles, the, 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 you know, the southern France, that, that part there was a colony. Of, it was a free city that became an ally of Rome. Uh, public tranquility, and that of the laws of uh, 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 that of the laws of China. Right. This is that uh, four here. Is that the natural purpose of the state having no enemies on the outside uh, or believing them checked by barriers, right? This is the, in other words, prayer book tranquility, that of the laws of China, and navigation, that of the laws of the Rhodesians, rose, like commerce and trade, navigation. But natural liberty was the purpose of the police of the savages, so natural liberty is the, the, of the savages, right? In general, the delight of the prince are the purposes of despotic states. So the despotic states, the delights of the prince. His glory in that of the state, that of monarchies. The independence of each individual is the purpose of the laws of Poland. In other words, this is, a, this, is the, uh, uh, this is interesting, this is that famous line. Uh, uh, the independence of each individual is the purpose of the laws of Poland, and what results from this is the oppression of all. Right? This is that idea of the uh, de in vitro. Right? This is the this is him kind of mocking the, uh, the Polish Commonwealth, right? Uh, particularly at the end or latter stages of it, how the de in vitro is kind of undoing everything. In other words, that the, 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 the independence of each individual, the de in vitro, right? The right of the the, the uh, uh, Elites in the Senate, I mean, this uh, in the Senate uh, to veto, right? Um, uh, and this led to the oppression of all, which is meant, you know, that, that, that was the fall of the Republic. There is also one nation in the world whose constitution has a political liberty for its direct purpose. So there's one nation, right? Is that we are going to examine the principles on which the nation founded political liberty. If these principles are good, liberty will appear there as a mirror. Uh, uh, not much trouble needs to be taken to discover political liberty in the Constitution. If one, uh, if it can be seen where it is, it, 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 uh, it, if it has been found, why seek it? In other words, in other words, in other words, if it can be seen where it is, if it had been found, why seek it? In other words, in other words the question is. So that's, that's, it ends with a question, right? Why do we seek it in that sense? And that's a weird, weird question, that this thing. So there's a nation who is political principles of liberty. Now, chapter six is the Constitution of England. Now, this is very controversial. Starkey argues that, and I think if you read this as arguing for judicial independence, independence of the judiciary, uh, this, mis this misunderstands what Montesquieu is saying here. 
And I don't think Montesquieu is even arguing that England has division of power, as most people will read here. Um, what is the glory of England will be, uh, I think, the juries. It is the juries, is him, is arguing here. His arguing is that the juries and how the English jury system, even in a situation where there is not complete separation of powers between the legislative and the executive, that this is where the jury, that the way the jury system is made in England, this is what preserves the liberty in England in that sense, right? So let's continue this. In each state, there are three, well, this is the problem. He begins the discussion talking about division of power, and this misleads. This thinks that, oh, it's about division of powers in England. No, no, I think this is a general principle, and this mislead. This is a kind of misleading aspect of the title here. Because what he talks about here is a general thing, not, a, not about England. So this is a kind of misdirection in one sense. In each state, there are three sorts of power, legislative, executive, and the thing depending on the right, uh, uh, executive power over things depending on the rights of nature, and executive power over the things over civil rights. So there's two forms of executive power. One is about the rights of nation and over on civil rights. By first, the prince or the magistrate makes laws for a time or, or, or for always and corrects or abrogates those that have been made. By the second, he, he makes peace or war, sends uh, and receives emissaries, establish security and prevents invasions. By the third, he punishes crimes or judgment, disputes between the individuals. The last uh, uh, will be called the power of judging or, simp uh, or the, uh, and the former simply the executive power. So he's, he, he, he now defines it and renames them. What was you know first legislative executive power of the rights of nations and the executive power over civil rights. He then renames this that of the executive power simply, and this about judging, right? Political liberty in a citizen is that tranquil, political liberty is a citizen in a citizen is that tranquility of spirit which comes from the opinion he has, uh, uh, opinion each one has of his security. And in order for him to have this liberty, the government must be such that one citizen cannot fear another citizen. So therefore, this idea that, this, that citizens should not fear another citizen. In other words, that the tranquility is that no one fears the other citizen, in that sense. That, uh, uh, that, that the law is, the government maintains the order which prevents any citizen from imposing, uh, 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 you know, f having to fear the other citizen. When legislative power is united with executive power in a single person or in a single body of a magistrate, there is no liberty because one, uh, uh, because one can fear that the same monarch or the Senate that makes tyrannical laws will execute them tyrannically. So this, this is the danger of having one united of legislative and executive power. Now in England, they, this is kind of the key, even though they're separate bodies, they are still... Uh, 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 the, the, even though the king is independent, the uh, the reality is the ministers are created by that. So therefore, the most parliamentary bodies uh, do not separate the executive from the legislative. Okay, uh, and therefore that's maybe a criticism of parliamentary systems in that sense. This is where Starkey starts balking at Montesquieu. Nor is there liberty if the power of judging is not separate from legislative. And that of executive power. So there needs to be separate. The liberty has to happen that the power, judging power, is not separated from the, the, the lawmaking power and the executive power. I mean, the, uh, of that. If it were joined to legislative power, the power over the life and liberty of the citizens would be arbitrary, for the judge would be the legislator. So the danger is that you should not have the judge making laws. The, 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 the judge cannot be the one making the laws. If it were joined to the executive power, the judge could have the force of the oppressor, right? So that if he's deciding, the judge is deciding the guilty and innocent, they would have the force of the oppressor of the executive. All would be lost if the same man or the same body of uh, same body of principal men, either of no nobles or of the people, exercised all three powers. 
that of making the laws, that of ex executing the public resolutions, and that of judging the crimes or the disputes of individuals. So notice the judging of the crimes and disputes, this is the important thing. But when he speaks of judges, he's not speaking of necessarily, he's speaking of the person who decides, who, who makes the ruling regarding the crimes or disputes of individuals. That's very important now. So what he, he means by the judge here. Uh, in most kingdoms of Europe, the government is moderate because the prince, who has the first two powers, leaves the exercise of the third to his subjects. Among the Turks, where three powers are united in the person of the sultan, a, 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 a atrocious despotism reigns. Right? In the Italian republics, where the three powers are united, there is less liberty than in our monarchies. Thus, in order to maintain itself, the government needs uh, 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 means of, as violent as the government of the Turks. Witness the state in, in, inquisitors, right? And the lion maw in which an informer can at any moment throw his note of accusation. So this is the six. This is uh, 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 in Venice, right? Talking about Venice, right? Observe uh, 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 the possible situation of citizens in those republics. The body of the magistrate, the, uh, as the execution of laws, retains all its power it has given itself as legislature. It can plunder the state by using its general uh, will. And also it has, uh, also um, as, sorry, its general will, comp, semicolon, and as it also has the power of judging, it can, it can destroy each citizen by using its particular wills. There, all power is one. And although there is none of the external pomp that re, re, uh, uh, reveals a despotic prince, it is felt at every moment. So therefore, if this, if this, in a republic, it can be, if everything is together like this, the body of this, okay, that, that therefore it can, you know. Thus, princes who have wanted to make themselves despotic have always begun by uniting their person, uh, in their person, all the magistrates. Magistrates. Um, and many kings of Europe have begun by uniting all the great posts of their state. I do believe that the pure hereditary aristocracies of the Italian republics is not precisely like a, this. In other words, I, I do believe that the pure hereditary aristocracies of the Italian republic is not precisely like the despotism of Asia. The multitude of magistrates sometimes soften the, the magistrate. Not all no nobles always concur in the same design. The, uh, there, ver uh, there, various tribunals are formed that temper one another. Ch ch power, check power, right? Thus, in Venice, the great consul has legislation. The pregetti execution. The quarta has power of judging. But the ill is that these different tribunals are formed, are formed of magistrates taken from the same body. This makes them a nearly a single power. So even though that these things are different things, they're formed of the same body, of the same group of people, the same body. Even though their functions are different, these things are different entities. They are still nevertheless the ills there is because these are all uh, the magistrates are taken from the same body. Right? Um, the power of judging should not be given to a permanent senate. It, you know, this is very interesting. That the the power of judging should not be given to a permanent senate, certain body, I mean, certain, uh, but should be exercised by person, drawn from the body of the people, at certain times of the year in a manner prescribed by law to form a tribunal that lasts only as a, a, a necessity requires. Now this is interesting, as in Athens, right? The Athenian idea of the assembly, you, you pull the sing this, the jury, uh, you pull an assembly of the people drawn from this lottery. Right? This is the, and they're there for a time and they just plan. They're not permanent. They last, the tribunal lasts as long as necessary necessity requires. In this fashion of judging, so terrible among men, being attached neither to a certain state nor to a certain profession, become, so to speak, invisible and null. The judges are not continuing in view. One fears the magistrate, but not the magistrates. Uh, these uh, judge, jurors, 
as the office is called in England, our judges, as they make the decision. Pardon. I sneeze, sorry. It is in, in important accusations, the criminal incorporation uh, 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 with the law must choose the judges, or at least he must be able to challenge so many of them that those who remain are considered to be his choice. So the idea that even the, even the, the accuser must be uh, uh, able to kind of influence the juries, that they choose them, consent of the, uh, the uh, the two, uh, uh, the two other powers may be given instead to magistrates or to permanent bodies because they are exercised. They are exercised upon no individual, but one being only the general will of the state and the other the execution of that general will. So, therefore, this is the point that the legislator and the executive. The legis the, the legislator is the general the creation of the general will. This is this is why you can have the permanent body. And the same thing with the, ex the magistrates of the ex uh, 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 who execute this, the, exec le the executive, because they are ex carrying out the general will, right? But, but through tribunals, but though, sorry, not through, though, but though tribunals should not be fixed, judgment should be fixed as to the degree that they are n never anything but a precise text of the law, okay? In other words, that the, you don't want the, the juries are not going to have to, they, 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 in other words, guilty, innocence. Uh, in other words, they are they are very simple things. They're not they're not complex. They don't have to do certain things. If judgments were uh, 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 were the individual option of the judge, one would live in a society without knowing precisely what engagements one has in contract. So therefore, this is why there needs to be law. The law has to be specific on this. The, 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 the judge only rules on the specific vision of the law in that sense. The dispute in question of that thing. And that, and that there is either yes, no, guilt, innocent. Um, further, the judges must be of the same condition as the accused or his peers, so that he does not suppose he has fallen in the hands of people inclined to do him violence, right? The idea of juries of room peers, right? Uh, if, uh, if the legislative power leaves to the executive power the right to imprison citizens who can post bail for their conduct, there is no longer any liberty. In other words, if legislative power leaves to the executive power the right to imprison citizens who can post bail for their, for their conduct, there is no longer liberty unless the citizens are arrested in order to respond without d delay to an accusation of a crime the law has rendered capital. In this case, they are really free because they are subject only to the power of the law. So therefore, if it, in other words, if it, don't, it is not a problem. If, if, if the crime is a capital crime, a cap, uh, in other words, they, you know, you're going to say that they're going to arrest people and respond and no longer, in other words, in other words if, if, if the executive, um, let it, if the executive power is the right to imprison citizens who can, who it can post boy for the conduct, there is no longer liberty, right? Unless the citizens are arrested in order to, to respond without delay to an accusation of a crime that is a capital crime. I mean, murder, treason, danger, that's a danger to the civil authority, right? And only in, in this case, they are really free because they are subject only to the power of the law. But if the legislative power believed itself in danger, endangered by some secret conspiracy, against the state or by some correspondence with its enemies on outside. It could, for a brief and limited time, permit the executive power to arrest sus uh, su suspected citizens who would lose their liberty for uh, a time only so that it would be preserved forever. In other words, this is the, even the dictator. This is the Roman concept of a dictator, emergency situation. Um, um, this is that idea, he says, that that if this, if the legislative power believed it, it's being threatened. This is why the Senate authorizes the dictator, right? Um, and this is the only means consistent with reason of replacing the tyrannical magistrates of the F force or the state inquisitors of Venice, who are also despotic. In other words, this is the only means consistent uh, with reasoning of replacing the tyrannical magistrate of the F force in the state, because uh, they are also two. Right? As in a free state, every man considered to have a free soul should be governed by himself. 
the people as a body should have the legislative power, but, but as this is impossible in large states and is subject to many drawbacks in small states, the people must have uh, their representation to do all that they themselves cannot do. So this idea, the people should be the legislative body, but that's going to be in, in large states going to be very impractical, and it has draw, and even in small states it has drawbacks. Okay, because uh, therefore instead, instead if you're going to have representation, you're going to create making this systems of representative institutions. Uh, then therefore the, the people must have their representatives do what they themselves cannot do. One knows of the need of one's own town better than those of other towns, and one abil uh, one's ability to judge of one's neighbors better than that of other compatriots. So if in other words, you, you know your neighbors, you know your you know your town. Therefore, the representative should be of your town, and therefore, uh, he's going to be representing your town. He should be of that town, right? And your neighbors better than uh, compatriots. Therefore, members of the legislative body must not be drawn from the body of the nation at large, but it's proper for the inhabitants of each principal town to choose a representative from it. Districts, in other words, representation must be specific to the po people that's being represented. It can't be this the whole general nation. To, you know, pick the people up here, up here. Represent. They won't do that. They won't. They won't know them. They won't have their reputation. So representation must be specific to the people that they're representing. They're not. Then they, they then they won't know them. Vice versa. They won't know each other, and they'll be. That's a problem. The great advantage of representatives is that they are able to discuss public business. The people are not at all appropriate for such discussion. This form uh, uh, this forms one of the great drawbacks of democracy. In other words, the people are not always the best. So public business representatives are a people who are capable. In, 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 in other words, all the people doing it. This is the famous participation problem. You can't have society. The whole population cannot address. All the citizens cannot really participate in a discussion. It's very difficult. It won't be. Not everyone will speak. It'll be the people who self-select and self-speak and it will be kind of a, a, a that's why you create representative bodies and that the body has to be of the size that their the representatives can you know truly represent the people and therefore at the same time conduct business uh, uh they're able to discuss the, the, the people are not always appropriate for this and this forms the greatest drawback of democracy it is not necessary that the representatives who have been generally instructed by those who have chosen them be instructed about each matter in particular business, as is the practice of uh, the diets in Germany. In other words, you don't have to have specific instructions. They're just that's in other words, he says the representatives elected should it's not required that, that they should be given specific instructions as the diet Germany does. It is true that in their way. The word of deputies would be better express uh, would better express the voice of the nation, but it would produce infinite delays and make each deputy the master of all the others. And on the most pressing occasions, the whole force of the nation could be checked by caprice. In other words, this is the danger of. I mean, even the German system is interesting. It does work in that one, but it, what happens? It's it's it is a crisis or a situation. Then the uh, um, uh, uh, the most pressing occasions, the whole force of the nation could be checked by a, 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 a what he says, a caprice, which is uh, you know this this fact that the people haven't gotten clear instructions. Right, Mr. Sidney uh, uh, says properly that when the deputies represent a body of people, as in Holland, they should be accountable to those who have commissioned uh, 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 them. It is another thing when they're deputized by girls, as in England. Right? This is um, uh, Adjunct Sidney Whig, and this is what he talks about in the Discourse of Government, section, Chapter 3, Section 38. And choosing a representative, all citizens in the various districts should have the right to vote, except those whose estates are so humble as they are deemed to, to have no will of their own. In other words, you have to have everyone who has a who has an estate and has a will of their own. If someone is dependent, completely dependent on others, they don't have a will of their own. As Sydney argued in that sense, and it, you need to have enough property, enough assets that you have a will of your own. If you're so dependent, then you're kind of the argument is that you don't have a will of your own. You're dependent upon others, and you're 
you'd be inclined to follow them or to do what they do. Um, um, a great vice in most ancient republics was that the people had the right to make resolutions for action. Resolutions which required some execution, which altogether exceeds the people's capacity. The people should not enter in government except those uh, to choose their representatives. This is quite within their reach. For if uh, there are few people who know the precise degree of man's ability, yet everyone is able to know in general if a man he chooses sees more clearly than most of the others. In other words, the idea here is that the people collectively, the danger of the ancients was that the people collectively were doing the decisions. And the problem with this is that oh, the larger party, no, they're not necessarily capable of making those good decisions. Um, but you, people, they are capable of uh, 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 determining who is capable among them. Okay, this is even Aristotle says about this that they're good judges. The people are capable of judging and reviewing. They're not necessarily making the right decision about a specific incident. They may not have the knowledge of how to do this, but they're able to judge someone, uh, the, uh, judge an action of others. Right. Um, um, uh, 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 for it is few people who know the precise degree of man's ability, yet er everyone is able to know in general if he has chose, uh, if uh, if the one he chooses sees more clearly than the others, right? They can judge, compare. Nor should the representative body be chosen in order to make some resolutions for action. In other words, representative should not be chosen to, for, in other words, should, the representative body should be chosen, in other words, nor should the representative be chosen in order to make some action. A thing that would, uh, 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 the thing it would not do well. In other, words, in other words, if you're expecting creating a representative body to act, representative bodies do not act well. You know, committees, committee is the worst form of government, he says, right? Um, but in order to make a law or to see that those who th they have made have been well executed, but they can do this, right? These are things that they can do well and only it can do well. So that, in other words, a representative body can check. It can make a law. It can make a rule. It can make, and it can oversee whether the laws that they have made have been executed correctly. Okay, so it can make the laws. It can make the rules and make a regulation, and it can oversee those executing and make sure they carry it out. This is what they can do correctly. Uh, in a state where there are always some people who are uh, distinguished by birth, wealth, and honor, but if they were mixed among the people. And if they had only one voice like the other, the common liberty would be their enslavement. And they would have no interest in defending it because most of the resolutions would be against them. Therefore, the part they have in legislation should be proportioned to the other advantage they have in the state, which, if it hap um, which will happen if uh, they form a body that has the right to check the enterprises of the people as the people have the right to check theirs. In other words, the powerful, in other words, is the danger. If you make everyone under the same body, and that's that these, therefore they feel they're going to be abused. The, 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 the great and the powerful will feel that they'll be abused by the many. That's why you need to create them as, they have to have a general, they have to have ability to have their will, their representation as well, um, uh, in that sense, he's saying here, right? And that, and that this is, the, the, the people, the people check them and they check the people. Thus, the legislative power will be entrusted both to the body of the nobles and to the body that will be chosen to represent the people. Each will have the assemblies and deliberations apart and have separate views and instruments. So this is kind of the, this idea of the, 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 of the, English, the English parliament. This is a a kind of representation of the English Parliament that the lords will be appointed. The lords have their own interests. If you have an estate, you have power, you're that. You have your own interests. You're in the lords, and the people will elect to the commons, right? Um, and 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 will have assemblies and deliberations apart, and have separate views and their interests. Among the three powers of which we have spoken, that of judging is in some fashion null. So among the three powers we have spoken of, that of judging is in some fashion no, not, not present. There remains only two. And as they need a power whose regulation to temper them, the part
hard lead acid body composed of nobles is quite appropriate for producing that effect. In other words, that, that the regulation or the power who's tempering the body, right? The nobles should be hereditary in the first place. It uh, 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 um, it is so by their nature and besides if they have had a great interest in preserving its prerogatives odious in themselves which in a free state must always be endangered in other words in other words nobility should be hereditary in the first place if it is by its nature and besides it must have a great interest in preserving its prerogatives odious in themselves and which in a free state must always be in danger. A free state would always endanger the prerogatives of the powerful. But an hereditary power could be in, uh, uh, induced to follow it, uh, uh, its particular interest and forget those of the people. And the thing about which one has a sovereign interest in corrupting, for instance, in the laws about levying silver coin, it must take part in legislation only through its faculty of vetoing not in faculty of enacting. So this is, again, this is interesting. The, the lords can only veto, it cannot create the laws. So therefore they have too much interest, they have too much power, and therefore this is why this, this idea that, in fact, this is where they get the idea in Americans that the state legislature, would, the higher Senate would not be able to, which was appointed by, not by the people, but by the state legislatures, would not have the right to initiate spending money, spending bills. Okay, that's why is that that weird amend, that thing about that can compromise. Um, uh, it must take part in legislating, but not in the fact uh, throw its faculty of vetoing, not enacting. I call the right to order. Um, I call the right to order by oneself, or to correct what had been ordered by another faculty enacting. I shall no words. So enacting is the to what. Is um, I call the uh, I call the right to order by oneself or to correct what had been ordered by another. The faculty of enacting. I shall call the right to render null a resolution taken by another faculty, the faculty of vetoing, um, um, which was the power of the tributes of Rome. So the Romans could not enact. The tributes could not enact. They could veto. Right. Uh, and although the one who has the faculty of vetoing can also have the power to approve, this approval is no more than the declaration that one does not make use of his faculty of veto. And it derives from that faculty. So that, in other words, I, I'm going to approve it. I'm not going to veto it. That's the, the approving of this is, is not the exercising of the veto. So therefore, the faculty of enacting is to, to create and to... Uh, uh, or is it, um, let's do it. The, the line is to uh, an order, uh, uh, I call the right to order oneself, to make an order of the set, to cor and correct it, the, what has been ordered by another, to correct, uh, or, in other words, someone else has made this, but I can correct it, change it. I can make, I can order something, put, a, put an order in something, or make a rule, or if someone else has made the rule, I can change it. This is an act. Um, if I can render now the resolution of the the, the, the thing, that's veto. And uh, and, and the idea of uh, 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 approving is only an act, not a veto. It is I'm not exercising my veto. The executive power should be in hand of the monarch, because the part of the government that almost always needs immediate action is better administered by one than a myth, right? Uh, whereby the dependent on, uh, wh whereas what is dependent upon legislative power is often better ordered by many than one. So therefore, execution, it's better to be handled by one rather than many. Hence, it makes it, the monarchy be better, right? Or some kind of rule by one, or ex the executive should be efficiency, the idea of efficient executive. You don't want multiple, you want committees and that destroys everything. Uh, whereas a, a law making things, you want many heads, not just one. Okay. Uh, whereas um, the dependent uh, is often ordered by many than one. 
if, were, uh, uh, if there were no monarch and the executive power were entrusted to a certain number of persons drawn by legislative body, there would no longer be liberty because the two powers would be united. Uh, the same person sometimes belonging and always being able to belong to both. So that's a danger. It's a warning against the idea of the modern parliamentary system. This is a kind of Montesquieu's criticism of contemporary European practice and parliamentary practice. There's no real division between the left. This is not, and therefore this is why there is kind of a despotic character of things. Uh, and this is why he would say there's no real, in, in England today, uh, pardoning the reforms and also today and, uh, uh, you know, past glorious revolution and past uh, 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 the, the reform acts and also not every European parliamentary model there uh, is no real separation between the legislative and executive. And therefore, this is why it's dangerous in that sense. There's no real liberty here because the two powers would be united, the same person sometimes belonging uh, and always able to be belong to both. If the legislative body were not convened for some considerable time, there would be no longer liberty. So therefore, you need to have the body conceived. <clears throat> not convened. Uh, for one th uh, uh, for one or two things would happen. Either there'd be no longer any legislative resolution and the state would fall into anarchy or there, there would be that these resolutions would be made by the executive power and then become absolute. So danger of the situation, they need to have right, they need to be, the, the assembly needs to be in order. There would also be useless for the legislative body to be convened without interruption. In other words, it'd be, it, the legislature would be convened without interruption. That would be inconvenient inconvenient the representatives and besides it would overburden the executive power in other words too much legislation right i, I mean the people uh, uh, which would not think of execute uh, which it would not think of executing but of defending its prerogatives and its right to execute so therefore this is the danger for uh, a legislative body that's in uninterrupted always there right it will totally start producing things it's inconvenient for the legislatures but it's also produces so much that the executive will say, no, 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 and try to preserve its rights and prerogatives and the right to execute. In addition, if the legislative bodies were continually, continuously convened, it could happen that one would uh, that one would do nothing but replace the deputies who had died with new deputies. And in this case, if the legislative body were once corrupted, uh, uh, the ill would uh, uh, would be without remedy. In other words, this is the danger of a, a parliament that continues itself and that those who die are replaced by the body itself, a self-creating body. That is dude, very bad. Uh, this would be the, where various legislative bodies follow each other. The people holding a poor opinion of the current legislative body put their hopes reasonably enough in the one that will follow. But if the legislative body were always the same, the people seeing it corrupted would expect nothing further from its its laws. They would become furious and would sink into indolence. Okay, this, and this is what the criticism of the long parliament was, right? This is the criticisms of what happened in parliament under the, under the, the in the, com, uh, the Commonwealth or the, by the English Commonwealth or the, the, the interregnum, right? This is what that that you didn't have a, uh, and that's why Cromwell had to come in and kick the parliament out, right? The legislative body should not convene itself, for a body uh, for a body is considered to have a will, have a will only when it's convened, and if it were not convened ununanimously, uh, and if it was not convened unanimously, one could not identify which part was truly the legislative part. The part that was convened or the one that was not. For if it had the right to prorogue itself, for if it had the right to prorogue itself, it could happen that it would never prorogue itself. Uh, this would be dangerous in the event that it wanted to threaten executive power. So there needs to be a separation. This is, in fact, this is the whole question. That's why, you know, the, the whole debate about this, that parliament, want, when the parliament sought to curtail the prime minister and prorogation, no, the prime minister's power to prorogue is his. Even though he is that, it's still separate. It cannot be controlled by the parliament. When the parliament controls prorogation, then it's, it, 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 it makes it useless in that sense. Um, 
this would be dangerous in the event that it wanted to threaten the executive power, right? Besides, there are some times more suitable than others for convening the legislative body. Therefore, it must be the executive power that regulates uh, in relation to the circumstances, uh, 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 to the circumstances it knows in the time of holding and the, uh, uh, and the duration of those assemblies. So the executive must prorogue or to, to, step, to uh, 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 call the assembly in that sense, right? If the executive power does not have the right to check the enterprises of uh, the legislative body, the latter will be despotic for wipe out all the other powers since it will be able to give itself, give to itself all the powers it can imagine. So this is the danger of legislative. The legislative needs the prerogative, the uh, power to prorogue and to power to, uh, to authorize. If it was, uh, it had all those powers, then it would just, but the legislative power must not have the reciprocal faculty of checking the, uh, in other words, the, but the legislative power must not have the reciprocal faculty of checking the executive power. For a, a, as execution has the limits of its own nature, it is useless to restrict it. Besides, the executive power is always exercised on in, 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 in immediate things. So therefore, the execution of it, the, in other words, it can't really be checked. In other words, no legislative veto. There can't be a legislative veto of executing. It can, they can oversee it to make sure it was done correctly, and they can punish when it's not done correctly, or it can, you know, it can withhold the means to do it, but it can't veto it, micromanage it. Um, for the execution has limits of its own nature and is useless to restrict it. Besides, executive power is always exercised on immediate things. And the power of the tribunes in Rome was the faculty in that it checked not only legislation, but even execution. And this cord the greatest ills. But if in a free state, let us say the power should not have the right to check executive power. It has the right and should have the facility to examine the manner in which the law, which, which the laws it has made been executed. And this is the advantage of the government over that of the Crete Macedonian, the Spartan. This is the this is the idea of the British government, right? Where the Cosmo and the Ephors were not held accountable for their administration. So therefore, this, you, you must have the ability to hold accountability. If they're not accountable, then that's dangerous, right? But whether or not this examination is made, the legislative body should not have the power to judge the person, and the cons and consequently the conduct of one who executes. His person should be sacred because he is necessary to the state so that the legislative body does not become tyrannical. If he were accused or be judged, uh, there would be no liberty, there will no longer be liberty. So this is a danger. This is the legislature needs to be, you can't be able to, the legislature cannot be able to, um, uh, um, uh, uh, judge this they should not be, have the power to judge the person and con and, and consequently conduct of one who executes in other words this is they can't the person the person the office and the thing that being done yes but not the person in that sense you have to make it as it has to be as you have a trial in this case the state would not be a monarchy but a free, unfree republic um uh, uh, but as he who executes cannot execute badly without having as ministers wicked counselors who hate the law although in other words who hate the law although the law favors them as men these counselors can be sought out and punished and this is the advantage of the government over that of uh, uh, that of the kidness where the people could never get satisfaction for the injustices that had been done to them as the law did not permit calling the enormous to a judgment even after their administration, in other words, in other words the number nine, eight, um, these magistrates elected annually by the people, right? this is the ASEAN, and then nine is that the, one could accuse magistrates after the magistrate, but not during the magistrate, right? This is how they could do this. Although, the gen, uh, although in general, the power of judging should not be joined to any part of legislative power, this is subject to three exceptions fo uh, founded on the particular interest of the one who is being judged. 
Important men are always exposed to envy. And if they were judged by the people, they would be endangered and would not enjoy the privilege of the last, of the last citizen of a free state of being judged by his peers. Therefore, nobles must not be called before ordinary tribunals of the nation, but before that part of the legislative body composed of nobles, right? So that the nobles should be judged by nobles. It could happen that the laws, which simultaneously clairvoyant and blind, might be too rigorous in certain cases. But the judges of the nation are, as we have said, the only, uh, on, uh, only the mouth that pronounces the word of the law. Inanimate beings who can neither moderate neither its force or its rigors. The judges can either guilt or innocent. Therefore, the part of the legislative body, um, therefore, part of the legislative body, which we have said uh, um, is necessary tribunal on account of uh, another occasion, is also one on this occasion. For it is the supreme authority to moderate the laws in favor, uh, 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 in favor of the laws itself by pronouncing less rigorously than the word of the laws. There was this legislative body that oversees the law can can moderate the laws in that sense and say that no, the law is too, the law was too strict in this case and that we need to moderate it. Like this is. It also happens that a citizen in a, uh, in a matter of public business might violate the rights of the people and commit crimes that the established magistrates could not nor would want to punish. Okay. In other words, they did something that in order of the public business and did something that violates why people commit crimes that I, they don't they could not nor want to punish in general the legislative power cannot judge uh, and even less so in this particular case where it represents the interested party the people therefore it can only um, it can it can be only the accuser where they can accuse but before whom will it make an accusation Will it bow before the tribunals of law, which are lower than it, and are more often composed of those who, being of the people, would be swept along by the authority of such a great accuser? No. In order to preserve the dignity of the people and the security of the individual, that part of the legislature drawn from the people must make its accusation before the part of the legislature drawn from the nobles which uh, uh, has neither the same interests nor the same passions. This is, this is impeachment. This is the idea of the Americans have for the impeachment process. Therefore, the, the popular branch makes the accusation and the nobles will be the judge, right? Of the, this, this, this actor who's done this, right? Um, uh, 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 this uh, last is the advantage of the government most uh, over most of the ancient republics, in other words, this is, this is, in other words, this, this is the this is why the English system was better in that sense. The republic, where there was abuse, where there was the absent abuse of that uh, of that of the people, were, were the judge and the accuser at the same time. So therefore, the, the, the Roman republics, the people were both the judge and the accuser at the same time. There was by the the, the the judge here is the nobles. And the, the, the English system, the, no, the upper cows, the nobles will be the um, um, there, and the, the people will be the low, lower house who represent the people are going to be the accuser. So therefore, the judge and the accuser are not the same thing. Executive power, as it was said, should take part in le the legislative uh, legislation by its faculty of vetoing. Otherwise, it would be stripped of its all of its prerogatives. In other words, it needs to be able to veto. But if the legislative power takes part in execution, executive power will equally be lost. So this is the double thing. And actually, this is what happens in England in one sense. The crown has become useless. The crown does not really have a veto at all. It technically can refuse to sign, but the crown does everything what the minister tells him to do. So there is that problem. If the monarch no longer took part in legislation by the faculty of enacting, there would no longer be liberty. But as in spite of this, he must take part in legislation in order to defend himself. He must take part in it by the faculty of vetoing. So the, the idea of vetoing, the legislature, the, the monarch and the legislature must be vetoing. This is the cause of change in the government at Rome 
was that the Senate, which had one part of the executive power and the magistrates who had the other, did not have the power, faculty of vetoing. The people had. Here, therefore, the fundamental constitution of the government of which we are speaking. Uh, here, therefore, is the fundamental constitution of the government we're speaking, the English one, right? As the legislative body is composed of two parts, one of the ch one will be chained to the other by their reciprocal faculty of veto. The two will be bound by the executive power, which will itself be bound by the legislative power. The form of these three powers should be uh, 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 should be rest or inaction. But as they are constrained to move by necessity motion of things, they, it, uh, they will be forced to move in concert. So therefore, these, these three powers, these three things. As the executive power belongs to the legislature, legislative only through its faculty of vote vetoing, it cannot enter into discussion of public business. It is not even necessary for it to propose because it can always dis disapprove of resolutions. It can reject decisions on, prop uh, on propositions it would have wanted left unmade. In some ancient republics where the people as a body discuss the public business, it was natural for the executive power to propose and discuss with them. Otherwise, there would have been a strange confusion in the resolutions. In other words, in other words if the ancient republics, the people were there, and were, the, the executive agents had to engage with that so there would be no confusion, right? If the executive power enacts uh, on the raising of public funds without the consent of the legislature, there would no longer be liberty because the executive power will become the legislature on the most important point of legislation. So the, in other words, this is the problem. If, 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 the, if, the, if the executive could just spend and take money without the legislature's con uh, consent, then that's problematic. Um, if legislature power enacts not from year to year, but forever on the raising of public funds, it r runs the risk of losing its liberty because the executive power will no longer depend upon it. And when one holds a, a, such a right forever, it is in, unimportant whether that right comes from oneself or from another, right? If it's, in other words, you say, I'm gonna pay this forever. No, it has to be year by year by year in that sense. Um, um, uh, the same is true of legislative power and acts, not from year to year, but forever about the land and sea forces, which should uh, entail, in, uh, which should entrust to the executive power. So therefore the funding and the maintaining of the land and sea power must not be to oh, forever, because if it's forever, then there's no control. The legislature have no longer control over it. So that the one who executes is not able to oppress, the armies entrusted to him must be of the people and should have the same spirit of the people as they were in Rome until the times of Maria, Marius, or Marius reforms, right? And they became private, they became the wills of the sole generals. This can be seen, this can be so in two ways. Either those employed in the army must have enough goods to be answerable for their conduct to the other citizens and be enrolled for a year only, as was practiced in Rome, or if the troops or if the troops must be a permanent body, those soldiers come from the meanest part of the nation. The legislative power must be able to disband them as soon as the legislature desires. The soldiers must live with the citizens and therefore not be a separate camp, a barracks, or a fortified place. In other words, it must be, in other words, this is, this is where you get that hostility to standing armies, right? Once an army is established, it should be directly dependent on the executive power not on the legislative body. In other words, the, the army was that is under the authority of the executive, not legislative. And this is in the nature of things, as the concern is more with action than with liberation. Men's manner of thinking is to make uh, men's manner of thinking is to make more of courage than of timidity, more of activity than of prudence, more of force than of counsel. The army will always scorn a senate and respect its officers. It will not make much of the order sent by a, a body composed of people it believes timid and therefore unworthy to command it. Thus, whenever the army depends solely on the legislative body, the government will become military. 
Um, it, it, uh, and if contra and if the contrary has ever occurred, it is the effect of some extraordinary circumstance. But it is because the army, uh, it is because the army, there is always sep uh, there, uh, there is always separate, because it is composed of several bodies, each which depends on particular province, because the capitals are always excellent location whose situation alone defends them, which have no troops. Holland is even more secure than Venice. It could flood rebellious troops. Um, it would leave them to die in hunger, <laughs> uh, since the troops are not uh, are not in the towns that could give them sustenance. Their sustenance is precarious. For if in the case of an army governed by the legislative body, particular circumstances keep the government from becoming military, one will encounter other drawbacks. One of the, uh, these two things must happen. Either the army must destroy the government or the government must weaken the army. And this weakening will have a fatal cause. It will come from the very weakness of the government. If one wants to read the admirable work of Tacitus on the mores of the Germans, Germanicus, one sees that the English have taken their ideas of political government from the Germans. Uh, this fine system was founded in the forests. Since all human beings have a, a, an end, the state of which we are speaking will lose its, uh, in other words, since all human uh, things have an end, the state which we are speaking will lose its liberty and will perish. Rome, Aspidonia, and Carthage have surely per perished. This state will perish when the legislative power is more corrupt than the executive power. So therefore, this is the danger of the single. It will not. Uh, it is not for me to examine whether, at present, the English enjoy this liberty or not. It suffices for me to say that it's established by their laws. I will seek no further. I do not claim uh, um, hereby to disparage other governments or to say that this extreme political liberty should humble those who have only a moderate one. How could I say that? I who believe that the excess even of reason is not always de desirable, and that men almost always accommodate themselves better to middles than to extremes. How could I say that as I who uh, believe that excesses of reason, of reason is not always desirable, and that men almost always accommodate themselves better to middles than to extremes, right? Harrington and his Oceana has uh, also examined the furthest point of liberty uh, of liberty to which the constitution of the state can be carried. So Sean, he ends at Harrington, right? But of him, it, it can be said that he sought the liberty only after misunderstanding it. And he built a, 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 a Caledon uh, uh, with the coast of Nancedom before his eyes. This is criticisms of, of Huntington. Huntington doesn't give us a real regime. He gives us this ideal thing that's not really real. He, he looks at Byantium, this perfect city of, of that, and, it, and it's like he, he built his calendar on, on looking with the coast of the, uh, of, of Byantium, which is not a realistic situation, he says. Chapter 7. Whew, that was the long... That was a very long chapter, chapter six, and this was always the big. This is the one that everyone talks to the, you know, the English constitution, right? Uh, monarchies that we know, the monarchies we know do not have liberty, but their direct purpose, as does the one we have just mentioned, they aim only for the glory of the citizens, the state, and the prince. But this glory results in in a spirit of liberty that can, in these states, produce equally great things and can perhaps contribute as much to ha uh, to happiness as liberty itself. So therefore, this is this, this, the three powers are not distributed and cast on the model of the constitutions we have mentioned. Have mentioned. Each instance shows a particular distribution of them and each uh, um, uh, uh, approximates political liberty accordingly. And if it did not approximate it, the monarchy would degenerate into despotism. So therefore, the monarchy is what we know will still kind of, it's, it's honor, glory, these things uh, will do this, but this will kind of replicate liberty that, of this, not the, what the, what the, what the, the British model. So therefore, it's the, it's, if it didn't do that, if it didn't moderate, he says, the particular distribution of them did not, uh, it approximates political liberty according. If it did not do that, approximate it, the monarchy would dissolve into despotism. Um, 
chapter eight, the why the ancients had no cl clear idea of monarchy. The ancients did not uh, did not at uh, all know the government founded on the uh, uh, on a body of nobility. Um, even less uh, the government founded on the legislative uh, less on the government founded on the legislative body formed of the representatives of the nation. The republics of Greece and Italy were towns and each, uh, each had its own government and assembled its own citizens within its walls. Before the Romans had swallowed up all the republics, there were almost no kings anywhere in Italy, Gaul, Spain, Germany, all uh, uh, of these small peoples or small republics. Even Africa was subject to a large republic. Asia Minor was occupied, uh, was occupied by Greek colonies. Therefore, there was no example either of deputies from towns or assemblies of the states. One had to go as far as Persia to find the government of one alone. It is true that if that there were federal republics, many towns sent deputies to assembly. But I say that there was no monarchy in this on this model. Here is how the plan of monarchies as we know them was formed. The Germanic nations who conquered the Roman Empire were very free, as uh, as is known. On the subject, one has only to see Tacitus on the Moors of the Germans, Germanicus, right? Um, on their conquerors spread out across the country. They lived in the countryside, rarely in the towns. When they were in Germany, the whole nation could be assembled. When they were dispersed during the conquest, they could no longer assemble. But nevertheless, the nation had a to deliberate on its business as it was done before the conquest. So it did by representatives. Here, here is the origin of Gothic government amongst us. It was a mixture of aristocracy and monarchy. Its drawbacks was that the common people were slaves. It was good government that had within itself the capacity to become better. Giving letters of emancipation uh, became of the custom. And soon the civil liberty of the people, the prerogatives of the nobility and of the clergy, and the powers of the kings were in such a concert that, uh, that, uh, that there had never been, I believe, a government on earth as well-tempered as that of this part of Europe during the time of this government considered to exist. It is remarkable that the corruption of the government of the conquering people would have formed the best kind of government men have ever been able to devise. In other words, it was the, not, not the keeping of them. It wasn't that the conquerors, the conquerors didn't keep that. The, the conquerors were corrupted. And that this becomes the best model. The Germans conquered. And that it was because of this corrupted the German practices. And therefore they created, instead of deliberating collective, they created representation. And therefore they uh, uh, eventually even moderated their own practices, right? They, they, uh, and this is what he explains. Chapter 9, Aristotle's men are thinking. An awkwardness is clearly seen in Aristotle's treatment of monarchy. Um, and this is uh, uh, you know, book 14, of uh, book 3, right? This is... Here he establishes five kinds. He does not distinguish among them by the forms of the constitution, but by accidental things, like the virtues and vices of the prince, or by intrinsic things like the usurpation, the usurpation of tyranny or succession to it. Aristotle includes in the list of monarchy both the empires of the Persians and the kingdoms, the kingdom of Lasmonia, but who he does not, but who does not see that the one was a despotic state and the other a republic. The ancients did not know the distribution of the three powers on the government of one alone. One could uh, uh, not achieve a correct idea, idea of monarchy in that sense. It's even monarchy has to divide power in a sense, the vision of labor. Chapter 10, the men are thinking of political men. In order to temper, uh, temper the government of one alone, Abras, the king of Epirus, could imagine only a republic. The Molossians, not knowing how to restrict this power, made two kings. This weakened the state more than the command. Uh, uh, one wanted rivals, one had enemies. Two kings were allowed in Lacedaemonia. They did not form the constitution, but were rather part of the constitution. So, in other words, they were officers, not the constitution itself. Well, once you create two kings, they're both like this. They become fighting warriors right, against each other. Now, 
chapter 11, on the kings of heroic times among the Greek. Among the Greeks in heroic times, a kind of monarchy was established that did not continue to exist. Um, uh, again, this is Aristotle. Again, this is Aristotle, part book 3, chapter 14. Those who had invented the arts, waged war for the people, assembled men who had scattered here given uh, or there, given them lands, won the kingdom for themselves, and passed it on to their children. They were kings, priests, and judges. These were uh, the, uh, This was one of the five kinds of monarchy, which Aristotle speaks. Uh, 15 is, again, this is that line in Paris that was called, right? In book three. This, uh, 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 this is uh, the only one that might arouse the idea of monarchical constitution. But the plan of the, this constitution is the opposite of that of our monarchy today. The three powers are distributed there so that the people had the legislative power, the king, the executive power, and the power of judging. Where, uh, whereas in the monarchies we know, the prince had the executive and legislative powers, or at least part of the legislative power, he, but he does not judge. In the government of the, th uh, the king's heroic times, the, the three powers were badly distributed. These monarchies could not continue to exist. Uh, for as soon as the people could legislate, they would reduce royalty to nothing, or at least the countries, as they did everywhere. Among a free people who have legislative power, among a people enclosed within a town, a a where everything odious becomes even more odious, the master work of legislation is, is to know where properly to place the power of judging. But it could not be placed worse than in the hands of the one who had the executive, already had the executive power. The monarch became terrible immediately, uh, but at the same time, since he did not legislate, he could not defend himself against legislation. He had too much power and he, he had not enough. He did not have enough. It had not yet been discovered that a prince's true function was to establish judges and not to judge. The opposite policy rendered unbearable the government of one alone. All these kings were driven out. The Greeks did not imagine uh, uh, the true distribution of the three powers, uh, 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 three powers in the government of one alone. They imagined it only in the government of many, which they called uh, a sort of constitution, a police. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, this is uh, politics, book four, chapter eight, right? This is the discussion of so-called polity, right? Um, uh, uh, police, indeed. Here, Montesquieu connects the police uh, uh, between the police and polity, right? This is this is what he, this is the polity, right? The police polity, right? Um, uh, called the polity, right? This is this misinterpretation of. Of, of, of this, of this policing, right? Chapter 12, on the government of the king, uh, the government of the Roman king, and how three powers were distributed in it. The government of the Roman kings was sort uh, somewhat related to the kings of heroic times among the Greeks. Like them, it fell from its general vice. And although in itself uh, and its particular nature, it was very good. Um, in order to make this government understood, I shall distinguish the government of the first five kings that of, uh, uh, from that of Servilius Tilos and that of uh, 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 Tarquin. The crown was elective, and, uh, and under the first five kings, the Senate took the greatest part in their election. After a king died, the Senate considered which one sh would keep the form of government that had been established. If the Senate judged it was wise, would keep the form of government. It named a magistrate drawn from a, uh, its body to elect a king. The Senate uh, had to approve the election, the people to confirm it, and, and the auspices to guarantee it. If one of these three conditions was missing, there would have to be another election. The, uh, uh, the Constitution was monarchical, aristocratic, and popular, and such was the harmony of the powers that there were uh, neither jealousy nor dispute in the first reign. The king commanded the armies that had the stewardship of the uh, sacrifice and, and had the stewardship of the sacrifices. He had the power of judging civil and criminal suits. He convoked the Senate. He assembled the people. He brought certain matters, public business before them, and ruled 
on, on others with the Senate, right? This is uh, 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 the Senate had great authority. The kings often pick the senators to judge with them. The king often picks senators to judge with them. They brought manners of public business to the people only after these had been deliberated upon by the Senate. The people had the right to elect magistrates to the consent of uh, uh, to consent to the new laws. Um, and uh, when the people permitted to declare uh, a war and make peace, they did not have the power to judge. When uh, Taurus Halilis referred the judgment of Horatio to the people, Horatio to the people, he had particular reasons that are found in the Dionysus, uh, in Dionysus of Heraclitus. Now, uh, this is uh, this is of the Roman history, uh, uh, book three uh, of of uh, of the uh, the the, the Um And the constitution changed under uh, so the constitution changed under Servilius Tullius. The Senate had no part in his election. He him, had himself proclaimed king, king by the people. He devised himself of civil judgments. He kept only criminal judgments for himself. He carried all public business directly to the people. He relieved the, the people of tax, taxes and put the entire load on the petitioners. Thus, to the extent that he weakened the royal power, the authority of the Senate, and the authority of the Senate, he increased the power of the people. Tarquus had himself elected neither by the Senate nor by the people. He re regarded Servilius Tullus as a usurper and took the crown by hereditary right. He exterminated most of the senators. He no longer consulted those who remained and did not even summon them to hear his judgment. His power increased, but was odious. Uh, uh, but what was odious about this power became even still more odious. He usurped the power of the people. He made laws without them. He made the sum in opposition to them. He would have united the three powers in his person. But the people remembered at a certain moment that they were the legislature and Tarquins, and the Tarquin, Tarquin was no longer. And that was the rape of Lucretia, right? And that was that moment. A moment happened there, and that, that the king was no longer really the real legislative people was. Chapter 13 The General Reflection on the Senate State of Rome and after the expulsion of the king. One can never leave, uh, uh, one can never leave the Romans. Thus it, uh, uh, thus it is that even today in their capital, one leaves the new places to go to search in, in, of its ruins. Thus it, is, uh, uh, thus it is that the eye has rested on the flower to meadows, l looks to, um, like, uh, meadow, likes to look at rocks and mountains. Right? The patrician families had always the, had the, the, the patrician families had always the great prerogatives. These dis, uh, these distinctions, uh, great under the kings, became more important after the kings were expelled. This caused jealousy among the plebes who wanted to bring down the patricians. Despite stuck at uh, 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 despite struck at the constitution this, this disputes. Sorry, despite disputes disputes struck at the constitution without weakening the government for. Provided the magistrates preserved their authority, it did not matter from which family the magistrates came. An elective monarchy, as was Rome, uh, unnecessarily assumes a powerful aristocratic body that sustains it. The, uh, uh, this fa failing, it, it changes immediately into a tyranny or a popular state. But a popular state does not need family distinction to ma maintain itself. This is why the patricians who were necessary part of the constitution at the time of the kings became a superfluous part of it at a time of the consuls. The people were able to bring down the patricians without destroying themselves and change the constitution without corrupting it. When Civilis uh, uh, Tullius debased the patricians, Rome had, f had to fall from the hands of the kings to those of the people. Tullus, Tullius, Civilis, Tullius. But when the people brought the patricians down, they did not have to fear falling back into the hands of the kings. A state can change in two ways, either because its constitution is corrected or because it's corrupted. 
to, to change because of it's corrected or corrupted. If the state has preserved its principles and its constitution changes, the later correct itself. If it, the state has lost its principles when, uh, when its constitution starts to change, the constitution is corrupted. After the expulsions of the kings, Rome would have been, uh, um, after the expulsion of the kings, Rome would have been a democracy. The people already had that as the power, the unanimous vote had, taken, had driven out the kings. And if, uh, and if their will had flagged, the, the Tarquins could have returned at any moment. To claim that the people wanted to drive away the kings only to become slaves of a few family would not be reasonable. Therefore, the situation required Rome to be a democracy, but nevertheless, it was not one. The power of the principal men had yet to be tempered, and the laws had to be inclined towards demo had yet to be inclined towards democracy. States often are more flourishing during the imperceptible shift from one constitution to another than they are under uh, either of the constitution. At that time, all springs of government are stretched. All citizens have claims. One is attacked or flattered, and there is a noble rivalry between those who defend the declining constitution and those who put forward the new one. So he's saying the energy, the thing about this is that Rome had not become the, a democracy. It was moving towards it. But this was the right of the republic. This is the height of the republic in that sense. Chapter 14, how the distribution of the three powers began to change after the expulsion of the kings. Four things principally ran counter uh, to the liberty of Rome. The patricians alone had obtained all the sacred political and civil uh, and military employments. So therefore the patricians alone controlled all the sacred political and military. And exorbitant power had been attached to the consulate so that the consulates had extreme power. The people were subjected to outrages and finally had almost no influence left in voting. The people corrected these four abuses. One, they had established that there could be, uh, there would be magistrates to which the plebeians could aspire, and uh, they gradually attained a place for themselves in all of them except the interacts. Right? The consulate was broken up uh, uh, and formed into several magistrates. The praetor was created, who was given power to judge in private suits. Questors, uh, who is named in order to have public crimes judge. Aedals were established to whom supervision of police were given. And treasurers, who were made to administer the public monies. Finally, the creation of censors. The councils were removed from part of legislative power that regulates the mores of the citizen and immediately and the immediate police of the body the various bodies of the state the principal prerogatives that remained to the councils were that they presided over the great assembly of the people con con convened the senate and commanded the armies so three the sacred laws established tribunals uh, who could at any moment check the enterprise of the patrician who prevented not only particular wrongs but also general ones and finally, four, uh, the plebeians increased the influence of, uh, in public decisions. The Roman people were divided in three ways, by centuries, by curia, and by tribes. And when they voted, they were convened and formed in one of these three ways. In the first, patricians and the principal men, the rich people in the Senate groups were nearly the same and, always uh, and almost all the authority and an uh, and, and nearly the same and had almost all the authority. In the second, they had less, and the third, still less. So therefore, the centuries, um, in other words, uh, the centuries, uh, 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 the, the, the other ones had more, the, that all the, the Senate, what they call the rich people, the principal men, the rich people, the Senate, and groups had, had this, uh, had nearly the same and therefore had all the authority. In the Curia, they had less, and in the by tribes, they even had less. The division by century was division based on the census and on needs, rather than division by persons. Those of the people were divided into 130 uh, uh, and 93 centuries, each having one vote. The patricians and the principal men formed the first 98 centuries. The rest of the citizens spread over the other over 95. 
therefore the patricians and masters of the vote in this division. In the division of Curia, the patricians did not have the same advantages, yet they had some. The auspices had to, had to be consulted, and the patricians were in control of them. No proportion could be made to the people that had not previously been brought uh, to the Senate and approved by the Senate Council. But the division by tribe, there was no question of auspices or the uh, Senate cons uh, Senatus Consult, and the patricians were not admitted. Now, the people kept on seeing to use the division by curia for those assemblies that were customly divided by centuries, and the division by tribes for those that were done by the curia, uh, which led to the transfer of public business to the hands of the patricians to the hands of the plebeians. Thus, when the plebeians had gained the right to, uh, to judge the patricians, beginning with the fair of Coriolanus, the patricians wanted to judge the assembled by tribes, not by centuries. And the new magistrates of tribunes and idols, which favored the people, were established. And the people obtained and the people obtained that they would be assembled by Curia to name them. And, uh, 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 and when their power was firm, they gained the naming of the tributes and the idols and the assemblies of the tribes. Whew. Chapter 15. How in, flourishing, uh, how in the flourishing state of the Republic, Rome suddenly lost his liberty. And the heat of disputes between the patricians and the plebeians later asked for fixed laws to be given so that judgments could, would no longer be the result of capricious or will or arbitrary power. They wanted to fix laws. After such resistance, the Senate had acquiesced. The, Sem the, the Sembers were named to compose these laws. It was believed that they had to be granted great power because they had, uh, uh, they had to give the laws to parties that were almost incompatible. The naming of the magistrates was suspended in the comita, they had uh, they uh, and in the comita, they were elected uh, uh, sole ministers of the republic. They were invested in both the powers of the consuls and the powers of the tribunes. The former gave them the right to convene the senate; the latter, that of the convening of the people. But they convoked neither the but they convoked neither the senate or the people. Ten men alone um, in the republic had all the legislative power, all the executive power and all the power of judgment. Rome saw itself subject to a tyranny as cruel as the Tarquin. When the Tarquin exercised this oppressive measures, Rome was indignant at the power it, it, it usurped. When the Decembers exercised theirs, it was astonished by the power it had given away. But what, but what was this tyrannical system produced by the people who gained political and military power only from their knowledge of civic business and and in whom circumstances of time needed citizens' co citizens' cowardice inside, so that they would let themselves be governed, and citizens' courage outside as a defense. The spectacle of the death of Virgi Virginia, sacrificed by her father to modesty and to liberty, made the power of the Sembers evaporate. Each man was free because he was offended. Everyone became a citizen because every man was a father. The Senate and the people returned to liberty that had been entrusted to ridiculous tyrants. So the, um, in other words, this is that very important idea that, 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 that the Decembers, one of the De Decembers did this story of, of Virginia, Virginia, said that made her, it's gonna make her a slave, made her rule that she should be a slave. So her father exercised his right of power of life and death over her to prevent her from being made a slave. This undid the powers of the Decembers, okay? And that therefore the Senate and the people SPQRs and the people in Rome, right, returned to a liberty that had been entrusted to ridiculous tyrants. The Roman people, more by any other, were moved by spectacles. That of the bloody body of Lucretius brought, an end, brought royalty to an end. The debtor who covered uh, with sores in the square changed the form of the republic. In other words, they went from more democratic form. That took the power of the, 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 the debtor who appeared in the sores in the square took away the powers of the, 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 the family. The sight of Virginia drove out the Decembers. 
For manliness to be condemned, the people had to be put where they could not see the capital. The bloody robe of Caesar returned Rome to servitude. Chapter 16 on the power, let us have a power of the Republic. There were no rights to dis, there were no rights to dispute under the December. But when liberty returned, jealousies could now uh, could be seen anew. So long as some privilege remained to the partitions, the plebeians took them away. Little ill would have been done if the plebeians had been satisfied to deprive the patricians of the prerogatives instead of offending them in their status as citizens. When the people, uh, uh, when the people were assembled by curia and by centuries, they were were composed of senators, patricians, and plebeians. In the disposition, the plebeians won the point. They uh, that they alone, without the patricians or the senate, could make the laws, which was called the plebiscite. In the comita, uh, uh, in the comita where they were made, uh, 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 was called the comita by tribe. Uh, thus, uh, uh, there were cases in which the plebeians had no part in legislative power, and in which they were subject to legislative power by another body of the state. In the frenzy of liberty, the people, in order to establish democracy, ran counter to the very principles of democracy. It seemed that such an extraordinary power should have been reduced the authority of the Senate to nothing. But Rome had admirable institutions. Uh, and these were principally two. Uh, 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 one in the lettuce of the power of the people was regulated, and two uh, in the other it was limited. So therefore the two powers, one the lettuce of the power of the people was regulated and it was limited. Every five years the censors formed and created a body of the people as the consuls had formerly done. They exercised legislation even over that body they, that, that had lettuce of the power. Tiberius Gracchus, censor, said of Cicero, transferred the freedmen of the tri uh, uh, tribes of the town, not by the force of his eloquence, but by, the, by a word and a gesture. And if he had not, he would have, he, we would no longer have this republic, which we barely sustain today. On the other hand, the Senate had the power to remove the republic from the hands of the people, so to speak, by creating dictator before whom the sovereign bowed and most popular laws remained silent. That's 44. This is uh, such those permitted on the extraordinary, uh, uh, permitted the ordinances of every magistrate to be appealed by the people, such as, in other words, the people could be appealed. No, no, no. On the dictator, no, no appeal to the people. Chapter 17, on the executive power in the same republic. If the people were jealous of their legislative power, they were less so of their executive power. They left it almost entirely to the Senate and to the consuls. They were reserved to themselves scarcely more than the right to elect magistrates and to confirm the acts of the Senate and, to, and that of the generals. Rome, whose passions was to command, whose ambition was to subject everything, who had always usurped, who usurped still, continuously pursued great matters of public business. Its enemies plotted against it, or plotted against them. As it was obliged to conduct itself on the one hand with heroic courage, on the other hand with consumer wisdom, the state of things required that the Senate direct public business. The people quarreled with the Senate over branches of its legislative power because they were jealous of their liberty. They did not quarrel with it over the branches of executive power because they were jealous because they were jealous of their glory. Um, the part played by the Senate in the executive power was so great that Polybius says all foreigners thought that Rome was an aristocracy. Okay, this is Polybius history book six, right? Polybius book six. They thought it was a, a, a there was the executive power was, it was an aristocracy. The Senate dispersed the public funds and farmed out the revenues. It was the arbiter of suits of the allies. It, de it decided the war and peace and directed the consuls in this regard. It fixed the number of Romans and allied troops, distributed the provinces and armies to consuls and the, or the praetors. And when uh, the year of command expired, it would give them to a successor. 
if it decreed triumphs, it received and said assemblies, it named kings, uh, uh, it rewarded them, punished them, judged them, and gave them or made them, uh, 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 it, 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 it gave or made them lose their title of allies of the Roman people. The consuls levied troops that were uh, uh, that were to, uh, 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 the consuls levied the troops that were to lead to war. They commanded the armies on land and sea. They marshaled the allies in provinces. They had all the powers of the republic. They had uh, uh, they had made peace with vanquished peoples and imposed conditions on them and referred them to the senate. In only times when the people had some part in the business of war in peace, they exercised their legislative power rather than their executive power. Right. They scarcely did more than to confirm what the king had done and what the consuls or the senate had done after them. The people were so far from being arbiters of war that we see that the consuls or the senate often made war in spite of the opposition of the tribunes. But in the drunkenness of their prosperity, they increased their executive power. Thus, they themselves created tributes in the legions who had until then been named by generals. And some of them, uh, before the first Punic War, they ruled uh, uh, that they alone would have the right to declare war. This is, that, this is the problem of the military tribunals, right? They rest, in uh, 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 other words, this is from in 46 to 144, when the year against the per uh, per uh, Perseus appeared perilous, the Senate consult ordained that this law would be suspended. The people consented to it, right? Then 47, the people, they wrested it from the Senate. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, in this supplement of Liberia, uh, Livy, decade two, right? This is, they wrestled it. So this idea, not 18. On the power of judging in the Roman government, the power of judging was given to the people, uh, was given to the people, to the Senate, to the magistrates, and to certain judges. Its distribution had been seen. I begin uh, with matters of civil business. After the kings, the consuls judge, and the praetors judge after the consuls. And Severus Tullus had divested himself of all judging civil suits. The consuls did not judge them either uh, 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 judge them either except in rare cases that they were called for this reason extraordinary right they were satisfied to name the judges and to form the tribunals that were to judge it seems according to the discourse of appius claudius in uh, dionysus Heraclitus, that as early as the roman year 259 that's 495 bc this was regarded as in the establishment the established customs of the Romans, tracing it back to Civilis Tillis, and not go, is not going very far back. Each year, the praetor made a list uh, or table of those uh, he chose to perform the function of judges during the year of his magistrate. A number sufficient for each suit was taken from it. The English practice is quite similar, and what was favorable to liberty is that the praetor selected the judges with the consent of both parties that, that made objections to judge uh, that m many objections to judges may be made in England today almost uh, 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 today amounts to the uh, uh, um, approximates uh, see of this usage to the Roman practice these judges decided only questions of fact for example if the sum had been paid or not if any action had been committed or not. Because uh, questions of right required certain ability, these were taken to the tribunals of this, the centurium. Uh, 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 um, so therefore, this is a different body. So therefore, the questors just, you know, gave them to those authorities. And if it was some ability, some more specific thing, not a fact, but some other qu uh, 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 a question of right, right? Um, 56, right? Um, this is yeah, Seneca, right? This, this would require a different body. The kings kept for themselves the judgment of criminal suits, and the consuls succeeded. Uh, uh, the consuls succeeded them in this. As consequence, as of, of this authority, the consul Brutus had his children put to death 
as well as all who had corrupt, uh, conspired on behalf of the Darklands. This power was extraordinary. The consuls who already held military power carried its exercise even into the public business of the town and their proceedings uh, devoid of the forms of justice were violent actions rather than judgment. This brought about the Valerian law, which permitted an appeal to the people of all ordinances of the consuls that might imperil the life of the citizen. The consuls were no longer, uh, 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 could no longer pronounce a capital penalty against a Roman citizen except with the will of the people. Right? This is, the, this is the, the, the Valerian law. But one sees the first conspiracy to restate the Tarquins as that the consul Brutus judges the guilty. Uh, in the second, the Senate and the commentator are convinced uh, are convened to judge. The laws, uh, uh, the laws called sacred, give the plebeian the tributes, the plebeian tribute, who formed a body that at first made immense claims, but does not know which was greater, the cowardly confederate of the plebes in asking or the compliance and readiness of the Senate of acquiescence. The Verilarian law had permitted appeals to the people, that is, to the people composed of, sen of senators, patricians, and plebeians. The plebeians established that the appeal should be brought before them. Uh, uh, so the question was raised as to whether the plebeians could judge a patrician. This was the subject of a debate that arose with the affairs of Coriolanus and ended with it. Coriolanus, accused by the tributes before the people, maintained contrary to the spirit of the Valerian law that being a patrician, he could only be judged by the consuls. The plebeians, contrary to the spirit of that same law, claimed that he had was to be judged by them alone, and they judged him. The law of the Twelve Tables modified uh, the proceedings. It ordered that one could not decide upon the life of a citizen except in the great estates of the people. Thus the body of plebeians, or that of or what is the same thing, the comita, by tribes, no longer judged any but the crimes those whose penalty was that of a punerary nature fine, in other words, that they control only the crimes that they there had to be a law to inflict capital penalty. To condemn a, a pecuniary penalty, there only had to be a plebiscite. So there had to be, in other words, there had to be a law to inflict a capital penalty. A law had to be there. In the, 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 the other, uh, uh, other words, a plebiscite could do, do a, 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 a fine or some kind of money, pecuniary penalty, small penalty. Um, this provision of the law of the Twelve Tables is very wise. It led to forming an admirable conciliation between the body of plebeians and the Senate. For as the uh, 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 competence of each, uh, uh, of each to judge, depending on the magnitude of the penalty and the nature of the crime, they had joined together. The Villian law removed all that remained in Rome of that government, which was related to the Greek king of heroic times. The consul found themselves without the with uh, uh, the council found themselves without the power to punish crimes. Although all crimes were public, one must distinguish between those uh, whose interest, um, uh, those of more interest to the citizens among themselves and those of more interest to the state in relation with the citizen. The first crimes are private, the second are public. The f people themselves judge public crimes and in regard to private ones, they named a particular commission of a questor to pursue each crime. The people often chose one of the magistrates, but sometimes they chose a private man. He was called questor of parasite. This is mentioned in the laws of the Twelve te uh, 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 Tables. A questor named the judge uh, uh, of the question. He was, uh, uh, and he, uh, was called, who picked the judges by law, formed the tribunal, presided under him at, at the judgment. So that was, they, they formed this, they, they picked judges by law. This is, this is the questor. The questor picks the people, the, the thing, they pick it. It is well to observe that here, that the part of the Senate in naming the questor, so that one can see how the powers are balanced in this regard. Sometimes the Senate had a dictator elected to perform the functions of a questor. 
Sometimes it ordered the people, it ordered the people to be convoked by a tribute so that they would name a quester. And finally, the people sometimes named a magistrate to report um, to the Senate about a certain crime and to ask it to name a quester, as seen in the judgment of uh, 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 Lucius Scipio, as in Livy. In the Roman year 604 or 150 BC, some of these commissions were made permanent. One gradually divided all criminal matters into various parts, which were called the or perpetual question were called perpetual questions. Various praetors were created, and each was given one of these questions. The praetor were given the power to judge the crimes which fell to them for a year, and after that they went to govern their province. After that they went to govern their province. In uh, Carthage, the Senate of 100 was composed of judges serving for life. But in Rome, the praetor served for one year, and the judges served even less than a year because they were chosen for each suit. One had seen in books, uh, chapter six of this book, so this, again, what English, how much this provision was favorable to liberty in certain governments. Judges were drawn uh, from the order of senators until the time of the Gracchi. Tiberius Gracchi ordered that they be drawn from the knights and this was considered a, was a considerable change uh, that the tributes boasted of having a signal rogation cut in snooze but, uh, of the uh, senatorial order. It must be observed that the three powers may be well distributed in relation to liberty of the Constitution, though they are not so well distributed in relation to the, with liberty of the citizen. In Rome, as the people had greater part of the legislative power, uh, part of legislative power and part of the power of judging, they were a great power that had to be counterbalanced by another. The Senate certainly had part of the executive power. It had some branch of the legislative power, but this was not enough to counterbalance the people. It, it had to have part of the power of judging. When it had a part, when the judges were chosen by among the senators, when the Gracchi deprived the senators of this power of judging, the Senate could no longer stand up to the people. Therefore, they ran counter to the liberty of the Constitution in order to favor, to, in order to favor the liberty of the citizen. But the latter was a lost among with, along with the former. This idea that this liberty of the Constitution, the citizens' liberty, was lost with the uh, infinite ills resulted. The Constitution was changed at a time when in the heat of civil uh, discords, there was scarcely a constitution. The knights were no longer the middle order uniting the people in the Senate, and the chain of constitution was broken. Uh, uh, there were also some particular reasons that should have kept judging from being transferred to the knights. The Roman constitution was founded on the principle that those who had enough goods to be responsible for the Republic should conduct a, 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 um, uh, should have enough goods to be responsible for to the republic for their conduct should be soldiers the knights as the richest men form the cavalry of the legions thus uh, uh, when their status was raised they refused to serve any longer uh, in this guard another cavalry had to be relied Marius admitted all sorts of people into the legions and the republic was lost in other words, once this, this, this became higher, they became that of that, they, they no longer took the responsibility of the Knights of the Calvary. Therefore, the new Calvary had to be done, but then, then everyone was admitted into the Calvary and the Republic was lost, right? In addition, Knights were tax collectors of the Republic and they were rapacious. They heaped misfortune upon misfortune and made public uh, needs rise from public needs. Far from giving the people the power of judging, they should, they should constantly have been uh, they should have been watched by judges. It should have. Uh, um, it must be said in praise of the old French laws that's, that's, that the stipulation made that the men of public businesses were made with the distrust of one of uh, one had for its enemies. In Rome, where judgments were transferred to the tax collectors, virtue, police, laws, and magistrate uh, and magistrates were no longer. So 
when our, everything was judgments for transfer tax collectors, virtue, police, morals, uh, uh, laws themselves, magistrates, and the magistrates were no longer. The artless picture of this is found in the fragment of the Dior Tortoise of Silsley and of Dio uh, Diatoris, uh, uh, Dio. Uh, Diatoris says, Mitos uh, Scaviloa wanted to call back the old morals and live uh, from his own means with frugal, frugality and integrity. For his, for his predecessors, in league with the tax collectors, who uh, were at the time judging in Rome, had filled the province with all sorts of crimes. But Savonola melted out justice to the Publicans and put in prison those who had been uh, who had been sending out uh, uh, to sending others there. Dio tells us that Publius Ritlus, his lieutenant, who was no less odious to the knights, was accused on his return of having accepted some present and was condemned to pay a fine. He surrendered his goods once. His innocence was manifest for he uh, was found to have many fewer goods than he was accused of having stolen and he showed the titles uh, and showed the titles of his properties he would no longer remain in the town with such people Di uh, Dior, uh, uh, says further the italians brought troops of slaves to sicily to plow their fields and to care uh, care for their herds they refused them food these unfortunate men were obliged to rob on the highway, armed lances and curbs, covered uh, 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 covered their skins of beasts and accompanied by big dogs. The whole province was ravaged, and the people of that country could properly call their own only the things within the town's walls. There was neither, uh, uh, there was neither proconsul nor praetor who could or would oppose this disorder or who would dare punish these slaves because they belonged to the knights who were judges in Rome. This was one of the causes of the slave war. I shall, I shall say only one word, a profession that neither has nor can have any object but gain, a profession that was always asking of and of, sorry, a profession that was always at, always asking, and of whom nothing was asked, is insidious and exhortable profession, and imp, uh, which impoverished wealth and even poverty, should have not been given and should not have been given judgment in Rome. That's the knights, and there was Montesquieu Mont arguing that the rise of the knights was interesting. The, what was supposed to be a middle element, this is actually an interesting argument that the middling element. If it becomes all powerful, becomes the corrupting element. Instead of checking, it becomes corrupting. And this is what's wrong with the bourgeoisie in that sense, we could say. Maybe the bourgeoisie, once it gets power in this sense, instead of being a modeling middle class, it becomes an aggrandizing monster who corrupts everything. And that therefore, since it corrupts uh, and, it, and it's responsible for the corruption, and because it controls the judging, there's no controlling it, okay? Like the judges of the, the knights, right? How the knights controlled the judging. No one could, could, could no one could stop it. No, no one could fight it because they, they were the judges. Chapter 19 of the government of the Roman provinces. The three powers were distributed in the towns this way, but it was far from being the same in the provinces. Liberty was at the center and tyranny at the extreme. So the Rome, the, the, in other words, liberty in the Roman towns, this is where liberty was, the, the center. And the extremes were always dominated. They were despotically ruled. Uh, liberty was at the center and tyranny at the extremes. At the time of the, when Rome dominated only Italy, the people were governed as confederates. Okay, each uh, uh, The laws of each republic was followed. But when it carried the conquest further, when the Senate had no direct view of the provinces, when the magistrates in Rome no longer governed, uh, could no longer govern the empire, then praetors and proconsuls had to be sent. From then on, there was no longer harmony between the three powers. The power of those who were sent brought together that of all Roman magistrates. What am I saying? Uh, to, uh, 
this is the parent, this is the, the transit of parentheses, right? Uh, uh, that's, that, even that of the Senate, even that of the people, uh, 76, they gave their edicts upon entering the province. In other words, in other words the praetors, they, they had absolute power. They were, if, even that of Senate, even the people themselves. These were despotic magistrates, quite suitable for far distant places to which they were sent. They exercised the three powers. They exercised the three powers. They were, if I dare use the term, the pashas of the Republic. Okay? Where uh, uh, we have said elsewhere that by the nature of things in a Republic, the same citizens had civil and military employments. The result was that conquering a Republic can scarcely extend its government and control the conquering state in accordance with the form of its constitutions. Indeed, since the magistrate it sends to govern has executive power both of a civil and military government, he must also have legislative power, for who else could make the laws? He must also have the power of judging, for who would judge independently of him? Therefore, the governor sent by, uh, by a republic must have all three powers, as he held in the Roman province. A monarchy can more easily extend its government because some of the officers it sends to the province have executive powers uh, 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 in some matters civil business and others in military powers in matters of military business, which does not bring about despotism. That a Roman citizen could be judged only by the people was a privilege of great consequence of him. Otherwise, he would have been subjected to the arbitrary powers of a proconsul or a pre a, 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 pro, a pro predator of, in, in the province, the town did not. The, the, the town did not feel the tyranny, which was exercised only over subject nations. Thus, in the Roman world, as in Macedonia, those who were free were extraordinarily free, and those who were slaves were ex, in, in, exceedingly enslaved. Okay, again, it's the Roman world, and like that. Uh, while, uh, uh, where, while the citizen paid taxes, they were levied with a uh, very great fairness. The levy was in accord with the establishment of uh, a severe Latus, who made distri uh, distributed all the citizens in the classes in, in order of their wealth and had their share set of the impost in proportion to each uh, uh, to each one share one had in the government. Right. The result was that some tolerated the high tax because of their uh, influence and others consoled themselves with their small influence with their low tax. There was another remarkable thing. It was uh, in that since the deviate, uh, divisions of Severus Tillis was classed by the fundamental principles of the Constitution, so to speak, it happened that fairness and levying taxes derived from the fundamental principle of this government and could and could be removed only when it, when it was the government was removed. But while Rome paid taxes painlessly, it paid none at or paid none at all. Right? The provinces were ravaged by the knights, who were the tax collectors for the republic. We have spoken of their harassments, and all histories are filled with them. All Asia awaits me as liberator, says Mithridates. The pillages of the proconsuls, the extractions of men uh, of the men of public businesses, the calumny of their judgments have aroused such. Great hatreds of the Romans, right? Um, Mithridates, this is like 79. Um, the harangue of uh, Togus Purpus, related by Justinian, right? Um, this is why the force of the provinces add nothing to the force of the Republic. And on the contrary, it only weakened it. This is why the provinces regarded the loss of Rome's uh, the loss of liberty in Rome as the period of the establishment of their own. In other words, in other words, it's just under the Caesars uh, comes the better administration of the provinces, and therefore, the, in the words Rome loses its liberty, the provinces gain their liberty. Okay, this is that weird ending, and this ends the book, uh, uh, chapter twenty, the end of the book. I would like to seek out in all moderate governments. I would like to seek out in all modern governments. We know the distribution of the three powers and calculate upon the degree of liberty each one can enjoy. Uh, each one of them can enjoy, but one must not always uh, 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 so exhaust the subject that it leaves nothing for the reader to do. 
it is not a question of making him read, but of making him think. Okay? So the book ends on, I'm not going to discuss all of these things. I just discuss it now. Now you have to go think about this question of the division of power and the question of how this balances and what works and what doesn't work. This is going to be relative. This is always going to be relative to the thing. And here we end the chapter. This is a long, long thing. I suspect this is about, it's going to be a, a, a long chapter. So if you liked it, like it. If you didn't like it, like it, say like this. If you have any comments or questions, please, please uh, put them down there and I, and I see them, I'll respond to it. Um, if you don't like it, say why you don't like it in that sense. Uh, those of you, uh, uh, if you liked it, really liked it, share it on social media, share it out to your friends, get it out there. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you have subscribed, encourage friends to subscribe so that we can grow the channel some. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, the links are below. If you want to help me continue doing this somehow, you want to contribute with me doing this, I was, you know, there's a story about I was supposed to do something, to, something happened and that prevented me from doing it. Um, um, you can contribute by being pro, uh, Patreon or subscribe star. Uh, or you can go buy one of my books listed below, okay? So please go think about that. Um, um, on I post these on Mondays and Wednesdays, the, uh, the Montesquieu stuff. I, the, I I post something else on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, um, and then I normally, unless something bad happens, like happened this last uh, uh, week, um, I will do a live stream. I hope to get my live streams more regularly. But we had some technical problems this past Friday, which screwed everything up, and I didn't get to do it. Uh, so therefore, let's cross fingers, and that's the schedule of things. So please, again, I hope to see you all. Take care, and have a good week, and have a good day, uh, and then have a good week. Take care. Bye-bye.